Have you been enjoying the adventures of our characters in Rumble Squad and Serviceable Plots? Or getting into the nitty gritty rules for 5th edition? Support us on Patreon. By contributing as little as $1 a month, you'll get to hear exclusive content and updates before anyone else. Our higher level patrons get access to DMs notes, outtakes from our episodes, and even a chance to add an item or NPC to a D&D Raw episode. Yes, you can hear our silly out-of-character shenanigans, and even cause some of your own by influencing the story. Our producer tier patrons listen to our audio before anyone else to give feedback and shape the final episode. We want to give a special thanks to our producer tier patrons, Matt Fry and Johnny Torres, for serving as producers on this episode. We also want to thank our adventure tier and above patrons for their support this month. So thank you, Feral Joe, Mosiru, Grimfuse, and a Linux fan. To join this list of outstanding people, go to patreon.com slash dndraw. By joining our patrons, you enable us to dedicate more time to creating episodes. And if you're not able to support D&D Raw on Patreon, we would love it if you leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you. Before we begin, I wanted to give a special shout out to some of our iTunes reviewers. So first, thank you, JK313. Thank you so much for the phenomenal praise. We do try to keep the story going and make sure detail and roleplay are at the forefront of what we do and make sure also we're enjoying the game as we go. So thank you so much for the praise. Also, thanks to Mosiru Abbey. I'm glad you've been enjoying the podcast. We try hard to focus on descriptions, make the characters interesting. I'm glad that you're enjoying all of the players and can tell that they're having fun too. And I'm really glad you've had the chance to get attached to the various characters and NPCs that are in the world. It's something that we strive hard to make enjoyable. So thank you so much for the kind words. We really, really appreciate it and glad that our podcast is bingeable if it's only been about a month or so. So thank you. Now, next week will be the darkest timeline for Aline and Akiva. Join us now for Serviceable Plots, Episode 27, An Odd Place for a Meeting. Hey, this is Tony. I'm the Dungeon Master for D&D Raw, and with me today are the following players. Hi, I'm Bethany, and I'll be playing Belinda Walsingham, the Half-Elf Awakened Mystic. Hi, I'm Adam, and I will be playing Akiva Khonshu, the Shadar Kai Hexblade Warlock. Hi, I'm Mike, and I'll be playing Scrib Whitecliff, the Human Mastermind Rogue. Hi, I'm Giuseppe, and I'll be playing Valen Blackwater, an Azimar Monk Paladin. Last time, Akiva finally put on his performance in the Ankalab Heights district, just as an old friend of Scribs came to see him and asked to meet up the next day. Meanwhile, the party traveled back to Belinda's to prepare to celebrate the performance when they ran into Canathar, who requested the amulet of Tenebris. After refusing to give it to Canathar, the half-dwarf brought them to his employer, the royal cleric Darvin Nathandam. Darvin and Zolus explained the plan to use the amulet to kill Tenebris and stop the rise of undead that has been occurring to the south of the Vremer Empire. Did you talk about Doc? He spoke of the Incubus assassin, yes. Are you able to confirm or deny his story? He fed us a line about the Blood War. Well, the Blood War's always been around. That has been a, a thing for time immemorial. No, but the idea that it suddenly would become a threat, it seems like there are multiple threats that are coalescing perhaps into one major concern for the Empire. I would like someone to roll a persuasion check with advantage for me. Either Belinda or Scriv, as you were the primary uh, push on getting information. I will help! 26, with a natural 20. I am not currently prepared to go and destroy Tenebris once and for all. I believe destroying him will be the key to eliminating this undead threat that's been on the rise, as being... The demon lord of undeath, he has many followers that tend to push that. However, in order to destroy him, I need to travel to the Rotten Region, to his domain. Oh. He also is in possession of hundreds, if not thousands of tomes of ancient history and arcane lore. You have my attention. Things that either once existed or never existed on this plane. Things that deal with the multiverse as it is. You see Akiva lean forward a little bit. I have some preparations to make, but while there, 
I would go with a team and attempt to get every tome, every text I can find that could help stop this threat of whatever has caused the gods to disappear. Not to bring up a mundane concern, because I think that sounds like a noble mission and it could have a major impact on a lot of people. Do you have a replacement for yourself? Because this seems a bit suicidal. There is always a replacement. Can I go eyeball Zolus? <laughs> He's not looking at you. Are there any assurances that these tomes of knowledge would be shared? Or would this be the sole possession of the Nathandom family? Since my father is not the one collecting them, the information would be shared to any who can affect the outcome, of course. It sounds like also what they contain could be rather dangerous. That is part of the reason that they would be researched. I would request the aid of, I believe her name is Catherine from the, the Erudite Sanctuary. Catherine Dunham? Yes, for aid in researching this, as I know she can be discreet if need be. It sounds like you have a plan in place, but it seems high risk. I am all for using the resources of the Empire. Have you reached out to any of the other kingdoms? They also have clerics. I would reach out to the Thessan kingdom, but they've been focusing on their own needs right now. Things have been extremely difficult for them. We sent them a letter to Solana, but part of the problem was a time frame. True. Without having this amulet in our possession, now that I know that it exists, we didn't have a way to pick when the aid could arrive. How are you actually using this amulet? Because we haven't understood how to activate it or what it actually does beyond the nightmares. In his realm, I can tie the life force that he has in the amulet to his actual life force. It is a ritual that would take some time, and upon destroying the amulet, it would destroy his essence from that realm. That sounds reasonable. Tony, can we make any sort of checks to vet this plan? Roll Arcana. It's a 23? You know about these amulets, the fact that they contain the essence of a being. You also know that usually they are placed in safekeeping and protected in various realms or pocket dimensions so that whoever created them can return. Destroying an amulet, you've heard of rituals that could link things together. So linking the life essence that's in an amulet to its original owner seems possible. So I'm going to just kind of mull it over a bit and uh, then say, all right, in one sense, I'd like to ask how we can help. But in another, this seems to be far beyond anything we as what adventurers for hire can take on right now. You just need people with a lot of different tools at their disposal. I can reach out to the Staff Federation. That'll be a given. I'll try to reach out to Solana and the Nephany. The Nephany, I'll see. They've been rather quiet lately. That's not abnormal, though. No, but even more quiet. They haven't sent as many dignitaries out as they used to. Interesting. Have you reached out to Thoven Arborshade? I've tried and have not gotten any direct response back. What I'm hearing is the best way we could help is by helping you recruit powerful allies. There is another thing you could do. Okay. I've been looking for information on the realm of Tenebris. A lot of research was done on the actual plane. The books are missing. Interesting. I'll uh, look over at Scriv. Yep, he has my attention. Tome's research notes are either checked out or just not there. And I know Catherine Dunham doesn't make mistakes like that. No, the system's pretty foolproof. I will say we had noticed some missing tomes as well, and it's not just in the Erudite Sanctuary. I was concerned about this. That means someone is trying to hide the information. Were you doing research on Tenebris, or was it research on something else? A particular period in history, during the Age of Barbarians. I wonder why they would want something like that. I'm not certain why the Age of Barbarians would be of interest if they are taking books. That's what we noticed. There must be something in that time period that they're looking for, then. Or trying to keep us from finding. Or maybe it's not even us. Maybe they're trying to keep you from finding it. We just happen to stumble across it. If you can trace this, try and find whoever it is that's taken these books, taken this information, and get it back to me, I'd greatly appreciate your help. Tell Pat the communication of the group, opening the chat. So, I'm game. I don't think this is at odds with our other goals. I know I was planning on tracking down where these books were. I'm pretty interested to see if there's any knowledge in any of the tomes that he's talking about that Tenebris might have about Umbra. I have other concerns about Umbra as well, but that's not here. We didn't coordinate that we weren't bringing up Umbra, but I just assumed we were not revealing anything about your 
Well, it all depends on how far you think we can trust him. Anything to contribute towards the defeat of a threat like Tenebris? Yeah, that's what my entire life's about. Count me all the way in. I think we're more than willing to help. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate this. I owe you a great debt. Yes, a great debt. So let's talk about resources. Slight smile. What do you need? Well, I think some additional hands would be helpful. We can handle a lot of research, but we can't be in multiple places at once. So if you have any, I suppose, acolytes or anything who could assist with going places and retrieving things, even from just around the city, that would be a huge help. Done. Do you have any clues? I assume these deathlocks took them. These servants of Tenebris. If they can infiltrate the way that I've heard. I will also ask, how are you keeping this secret? You're telling us pretty upfront because Zolas trusts us and you trust Zolas. But once the knowledge of what you're doing gets out and trickles down, your plan is compromised. There are very few people who know what I am attempting. Most of them are in this room. I think you should keep it that way. That is my intention. So I'm going to turn to the rest of the group. What do you think we could use that would help us? Access to the books that he has. His family's personal library. You'll have to send note ahead that you will be arriving, but that will be no problem. I will make sure Amelia can escort you to our private library. Thank you. And if we happen to need any sort of financial resources for travel? Any resource you need in relation to this, I can help you. I think that's fair. I want to make sure that we're equipped to do a good job. And I want to make sure you have the best possible funding and efforts behind you to get this done quickly, efficiently, and quietly. We are very discreet, and I'm going to sort of look over at Akiva. Darvin smiling. You realize I did talk to Zolas for quite some time about his journey here, right? I know who can be discreet, yes. Well, I think that's all I could think of. Anyone else have anything that you want to ask our esteemed cleric here about? Darvin, I'm not entirely sure if it's related to the death locks and the missing uh, research, but... I did very recently come across a powerful servant of Archon. In the final round of the one versus one competition during the festival days, uh, we were faced off against each other. He expressed quite a bit of knowledge about me, about uh, my dealings, my goddess, and proclaimed himself a servant of Archon. If I remember correctly, his name was Mavic Thul. He was in the competition, so I'm assuming he was seemingly sane. Quite so, which is the alarming part to me. Seemed well within his faculties, used full sentences, controlled himself remarkably well because I'm fairly certain he could have killed me casually and chose not to. He holds the hands up and just goes, a moment, and he focuses on his symbol on his chest, pauses as he begins to recite an incantation and just goes, Look into the name Mavic Thul, 1v1 tournament, as quickly as possible. Be discreet, don't be followed. Report back when you have information. Then he opens his eyes. I'll look into it. We gathered. Secondly, just on a more personal note, I don't know if you're busy at all tomorrow, but I'm having a little ceremony, and I wasn't going to ask, but if I'm meeting an old friend, and you wanted to come back to the uh, temple, we are going to be swearing in the first of a new order of paladins under the banner of Eshenai. Might be cool. I know you're busy. Roll persuasion. 27. At dusk, I assume? Yes. Well spotted of you. I'll see if I can get there. Greatly appreciated. Will you be bringing all of those guards with you? There's a slight just sigh. I'll see if I can minimize those with me. They can always sneak you out. No, you can't. Yeah, Akiva, remember we've talked about things that will get you arrested, even if it's just a misunderstanding? Right. Yeah. Well, it sounds like we've got a good plan here, then. If there's anything else? I think that's all for now. Please. He gets up and gestures for all of you to do the same. I'll turn to Zolas before we leave and say, You look good. You clean up nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. We'll be in touch. Yes, please do. And if you need anything from me, anything from me, or have me do, please don't hesitate to ask. We won't hesitate. Nod once. Head towards the door. I'll give him a hug. Bye, buddy. Bye, Akiva. You don't even get to the door before you as two guards are opening it and you are escorted to the front where Kanathar is waiting. From here, Kanathar is going to escort you out of the region's seat. And from there, I'm assuming you guys are heading back to Belinda's and Valen's back to the temple. Yeah, I think so. You guys return back to your respective 
places of rest for the evening. Kanathar only escorted you basically so far as to get out of the Regency and then kind of nudged you a bit scrim and said, I guess I'll see you in the morning, huh? Yeah. All right. And went about on his own business. What's our plan for the next day? I want to visit my friend. Or Lay, right? Yeah. And she's in the low hills, right? Yeah. So I was going to play a game of Cataclysm with Kenneth Archen over breakfast, maybe ask him about the Artificer, and then go visit Orlay. I might have some information on the Artificer, a potential lead for us to follow up. It would take us outside of Orenthal. Not too far, though. I'm starting to like that. I also have some things I want to try and uh, outside of Orenthal. So I know we have the name Isaac to follow up on, but I think he's probably not who we're after. We could still follow up, but he's pretty much... Out in the open, his work is pretty public. He's looking for renown and recognition for what he's doing. And it sounds like what Salvador needs is something secretive. So I reached out to someone I know, and he said there is an artificer who has sort of retired from public life and is in the small town of uh, Oakheart. It's just outside of Orthol. It's kind of a nowhere place. Like, I hardly even remember it exists. And that she hasn't really publicly released any work in a while and his guess is she's the one who would have something secret if she's working on that Zalvador would want. So you don't think it's worth asking Kanathar for information? I think you can still definitely ask. I would just say that's my lead. I think we should follow up on it, I suppose. From what I'm hearing, no one is averse to leaving Orenthal. I like having a bed again. It's just... What's wrong with the ground? What did the ground ever do to you? Yeah. Sleeping on the ground is terrible. I operate in two extremes, either very comfortable bed or holes in the ground. So I guess feel free to ask. I just want to let you know what I found out that I think could be helpful. But I don't think we need to follow up on my lead tomorrow. It sounds like we have a pretty full day. So if you're okay with that script, I'd like to come with you to the Kanathar Chan game. You know, just to keep an eye on things. Not because I doubt your cataclysm skill, but because I still don't trust him. Well, you've also been a very good referee if you remember our last game yeah i'm glad i could be helpful and then i guess after that we'll go meet up with your friend and then valen your uh ceremony is tomorrow night at dusk yeah tomorrow night okay akiba would you be coming with us or valen i would probably meet up with you guys to visit scrip's friend but actually in the morning while you guys are playing cataclysm i probably actually want to go talk to uh Ramoa. she seemed very helpful yeah, I wanted to thank her for coming to see the show. Also, I had a couple questions I wanted to ask regarding magic. So, are we meeting for dinner after Valen's ceremony just to celebrate? Yeah, I think that's great. I don't know if I want to go back to the most expensive restaurant again. <laughs> no, maybe maybe not that. No, not something fancy like that. Just a smaller affair somewhere it can just be us, you know? Yeah, actually, Scrip, are you okay? I noticed you didn't eat anything. Are you hungry? No, I'm not that hungry. The conversation kind of took away any appetite I had. It's just nothing against the Dawn Herald, but it's his family that I take issue with. Well, we can't all be held responsible for what our parents do. No, but your family doesn't exactly thrive in all high faulting decorations and stuff. I don't know. It's different. It's weird. I, I don't like it. I think you're just getting to see more family dynamics than, you know, what you were exposed to in Veripol. Trust me, the high vaulting decorations does not make a bad family. Did you have a lot of decorations back home? Absence of decorations. And still bad family. I see. Coming at that on the reverse side. Just gonna quietly side hug bloody Akiva. Well, and Valen, are are you going to be with uh, Akiva, or are you busy? You know, I actually don't have any more plan to do. The last bits I've I've left up to uh, some of the acolytes to get ready for tomorrow night, so if you've got nothing private to keep from me, Akiva, I, I would be happy to join you. No, you can come meet Namoa. She's really nice. Okay. So it sounds like we're gonna split up in the morning, and then uh, some of us will go and meet up with um, Orle. Yeah. And the Low Hills. It's gonna be nice. You keep saying it with that tone, and that worries me. I feel like I was pretty upfront about how I feel about the Low Hills. It's... Yeah, but you can handle yourself pretty good. I'm just a half-elf woman who currently has a dagger I never planned to use. I don't go to the Low Hills often. Most people don't who aren't ready for something. But 
it just seems like an odd place to arrange a meeting with an old friend, but I, I'm sure she has her reasons. I'm just surprised. I would assume you'd want to meet somewhere, you know, with, like, beautiful parks, which we have here at Orenthal, and not the low hills. No, that's not Orlay's style. Orlay spent most of her time growing up in the ruins, so I guess she's like me in that all this, it's all just a bit much. The low hills is also a bit much, but in a different way. But I guess we'll uh, see what it's like tomorrow, and hopefully it'll all go well. Yeah. So... The night passes uneventfully, and uh, you awaken the next morning. And Scriv, Canthar would have told you to head to the hypnotic night to play the game. Cool. Bring my pieces. You return. He is not on stage this time. He is waiting at a table. You see a small bag uh, on the table with him, and he's just talking to a few of the patrons as you are. Scriv, come, please, please, sit, sit. Uh, food for my friends, please. Thank you, Canthar. I will also sit. He just nods to you. I just start setting up the board. Sidebar, is he on the list? Oh, your dad's list? Yeah. No, he is not. Okay. Canathar, you seem to be doing well this morning. Ah, oh, I got a good night's sleep. It's, ah, uh, I'm feeling so refreshed. Yeah, it's been a busy few days, a lot of performing, but I took the day off today. You know, gotta relax a little bit every once in a while, enjoy yourself. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be working this early in the morning. No, it'd be awful. All right, we have board set up. Let's see, let's see. Dragons of Remer. I'll take uh, the Draconic side. I'm feeling lucky with that. All right. This isn't a game of luck so much as it is a game of skill. Oh, but luck fills in with everything. It is a game of skill and a game you have to play well and play against your opponent, but there's always a little bit of luck to it and, you know, drawing the tiles. Right, Scriff? Absolutely. Looks for a minute and his first placement is an assassin piece. I would like to reach into a bag and draw out my parent. Going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. All right. I like this. I got to tell you guys, I've been traveling so much lately. Uh, I came back to Orenthal because I know that there would be a bunch of money in during Astalda. I'd make so much coin here. Oh, yeah. I don't blame you for wanting to bring in some coin for hard work. It's incredibly helpful traveling around, but I have a friend of mine and he's been, been going around. Uh, have you heard any of... The rumors from around Mandeville? Have any of you been to Mandeville? No, I haven't particularly been to Mandeville. No, not... I mean, I'm aware of its existence and location, but uh, I haven't really seen anything to draw me there. It's just a day southwest of here. It's not very far. I've got a buddy who's out there. As he does, he begins to do a rice gambit. I will place down a grim. Okay, trying to outmuscle me. Anyways, no, I was telling you about the, the friend of mine. Yeah, it's an old friend of mine, and he, bit of a gambler, him. He lost a lot of coin out there, I gotta tell you. Well, that's a shame. Yeah, not the smartest guy. Didn't you see he plays a Perrin's Press? I thought he would do that, which is why I placed out the Grim. I'm going to use Grim Sacrifice. Okay. Yeah, that might have been a too cautious play on my part. It sounds like being cautious is good, unlike your friend who sounds rather reckless. Well, completely. He was telling me the other day, he was hoping to head back out there and talk to the owner of the Slaughtered Eagle. He wanted to set up a rematch with the, the bartender there. You know, he says the owner's a good guy, would be willing to give him another shot. And he begins to play in Avandre's advance. I'm going to use Perrin's opening. If he's going to test, I'm going to leave an opening for him to approach and see if maybe I can circumvent him. He's trying to study you a bit. Open telepathic. Oh, open telepathy. He's playing very offensively. Well, I suppose that makes sense. He seems like a type who would like to bluff someone and just push his advantage. You see him do a, a slight variant on a rice gambit again. I'm going to counter with a quick and borax gambit. If he's going to bluff, I'm going to bluff right back and see if maybe I can scare him by being super offensive. Sorry, uh, we were talking. Yeah, I was telling you about my friend. See, all I told him is, really, he shouldn't be wasting his money out there. He should just come back to Orenthal and bet his money here. See, I'd be happy to take it from him. I need to make whatever money I can, right? And if he's willing to just, you know... Give it away? And at this, he plays uh, Zaylin's Glory. I already gave up Grim. I can't use a Grim Sacrifice to counter that play. That's actually very good. I'd like to try an Olar's Castle and see if maybe I can counteract. I was trying to be super offensive, and I'm not sure I can pivot back. So at this point, I would like three rolls. You can do either an Intelligence or a Sleight of Hand on each one. With proficiency for the Intelligence one. 17 is the first one, an intelligence check. The second will be a sleight of hand, also 17. And then the final one will be an intelligence. 20. 
though he plays a very good game, with that last push, he leaves himself wide open for a counterattack from you, and you are able to take his piece. I reach across the table and offer my hand. I see why you're the semifinalist there. Why didn't you compete with game like that? You would have done great. Making coin. There's no guarantee I make coin if I don't win the whole thing. Yeah, there is some outlay of cash required to enter, and also I know it draws some attention if you do it win. It does a bit. I mean, look how quickly I found out you were a semifinalist, and slight wink from him. Well, I am mentally fried here. I'm gonna go get some drinks, kick back, and relax a bit. Canathar, there is one last thing, if because I have to go meet a friend over, uh, what was it, the Low Hills? Yes, we're going to the Low Hills to meet a, an old friend. Dangerous place to go. That's what I keep hearing, but unrelated i wanted to ask is there any way i could maybe meet with the artificer who made those automated soldiers that one in particular oh, that'd be a tough bet usually anybody who works directly for the regency you know they don't like to let anybody go talk to them kind of disappointed okay tell you what i can see what i can do maybe talk to a few people you flattered me with a game it's the least i can do to go and talk to some people Thanks, Kanathar. I appreciate that. Of course. Staying in the same place, I assume? We should be here for a bit. We might have to visit out of town. I, Some of us have things to do, and we'll probably be back in Orenthal. I don't know what the timeline is. Belinda? Yeah, well, we'll be at least for the next day or so. If not, you could always leave a message at the Much Cried Little Bull. Of course. I'd happily leave a message for Henrietta. We can catch up a bit, too. I'm sure you're old friends. Thanks, Kanathar. No problem. And he gets up and goes over to have a drink. Just pick up my pieces and decide that was way too close. But that's what makes it a good game, right? If it's just a landslide, it's no fun. Yeah, he's really good at bluffing. I couldn't tell that all those aggressive plays were just a bluff until the last stroke. I mean, he does seem to be a charismatic guy. I think kind of presenting a certain version of himself is something he's used to. But yeah, no, congratulations. Add his name to your list. Yeah, I'll write down Kenneth Archen as name of someone that I would like to play again. All right, so we're going to jump over to you, Akiva, and Valen. You arrive at Zoxiara's Academy of the Arcane, the massive building that houses some of the most powerful wizards in all of Orenthal. And there are several cards up front. Okay, I'll approach one of the guards. Hi, I'm here to see uh, Nomura Bazdum. Name? Akiva Kanchu. You see him nod towards one of the other guards who enters the building. You wait. You wait some more. She might be in class. After about 10, 15 minutes, you see the guard walk out, and right behind him is the tiefling instructor, Nermora. It's like, Akiva, hello, and puts both hands on uh, both your shoulders. How are you? That was a fantastic performance. Uh, it was absolutely fun. Have you eaten breakfast yet? We should go get breakfast. Okay, thank you. You know what? I know a fantastic little place I can get us in. Who's your friend? This is my friend, uh, Valen Blackwater. Extends a hand. Valen, a pleasure to meet you. Namora Bestoon. Absolute pleasure to meet you. Please, let's go sit and enjoy some food. I know this fantastic little place around the corner. She starts to lead the way, uh, almost before you even finish saying okay, and is just walking around and heads to a uh, fairly small building, actually, considering this district is pretty ostentatious, and walks in, and it's a tightly packed little dining room. And she just waves over at the uh, the bartender and finds a table off in, in one corner. Like, so, you've come to see me. I have a lot of free time today. What can I do for you? How can I help you, Akiva? First off, I want to say thank you so much for coming to my show. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Of course, it was fantastic. Yeah, I, I worked really hard to try and uh, make sure the acts were perfect. I can tell. It definitely looked like you put a lot of effort into that. Yeah. So, I do actually have a bit of a more of a formal reason to come see you. So yeah, I know you're the abjuration, Professor. You you know my story. Of course. Are you asking me for help? I can help you get back. I can see what I can do to help you get back in with your family. I'm not entirely sure if that's what I want right now, but if, if there's a possibility of going back, because recently I've had... I can't tell if it's a, a vision or just some stress, but I had... There's some baths, by the way, if you have a lot of stress they they take really good care of you i can i can send word out they can they're very relaxing thank you i appreciate it of course i just want to help but i'm sorry i'm interrupting you a lot please no, keep going no worries it's, it's all good 
I had a vision of the only people I like from my uh, home. You had so few friends there, didn't you? It must have been a depressing place. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Do you need help to find her? Is there anything up with that? Can I help you with that? Is contact between the, the realms possible? Just contact? Even a sending spell can create a link. There is a chance of failure between the different planes, but yes. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, I didn't know because it's... I don't really have a good grasp of how magic works. I... Right. Your power comes from your patron rather than from uh, intrinsic study of the weave and how that all works. Yes, okay, of course. I understand that. Yeah. So I was just looking to see if there was any way I could maybe get a message to them to see if everything's okay. Do you know the sending spell? I do not. Beyond that, I could see if I could help you return. Does that require like a lar- um, uh, long amount of study into like a spell to return? I mean, do you know the portal in which you arrived? Do you recall where it was? Yeah, I recall at least where I was dropped out. I mean, that would be the easiest way to get back, yes. Good to know. I didn't know if that was a one-way thing or not. No, most of the time if there's a portal, unless, I mean, I remember you telling me you were escorted to the portal, not a portal was made for you, correct? Correct. Okay, so if you were escorted to a portal rather than a portal being made, that means that it's not a temporary one, it's one that appears every so often, most likely, and you would just need to then go back to the location of the portal in order to go through it. Hopefully it's the right time of year, or whatever the keys are that you need to get through the portal or anything like that. But essentially that's what you would need to do if you wanted to head back. I could also try to see if I know anyone that knows a spell powerful enough to actually send you back because that's, uh, could work, but that also might mean that you might be reliant on only that person to come back here if you wanted to come back here, and I know you were exiled, but maybe we can get a team together and actually discuss with your people on reestablishing you within your group. What do you say? I can do that. I can have everything set up. It'd be no problem. It'd take me maybe a few days tops. I can get everything set in motion, get paperwork done, get people here. Is that what you know? Is that how I can help you, Akiva? I mean, you've given me a, a, a ton of great information. I think for now, I'll probably try to look into the portal from where I came from. And then how long would it take to learn something like the Sending Spell? Or are there scrolls? I mean, there's scrolls that could be used. I would do one for you, but it requires a lot of material. I could still do it if you could provide me with the materials. Yeah, what exactly would you need? Roughly, I want to say about... 200 gold worth of uh, magical ink and parchment together in order to craft something like this. Okay. So the sending spell only will work if it's someone that you're familiar with, So which means that I can craft this for you and give it to you and you can attempt to use it. Are you powerful enough to cast spells within the third sphere of magic? Yes. Excellent. So you would be able to at least attempt to do this with minor degrees of difficulty. Yeah, I think that might be at least because preferably... <laughs> Would not love taking a trip back to the homeland if I can avoid it, but I am a bit worried if um, it happens to not be just some stress-induced dream. I completely understand, and anything I can do to also help you, Akiva, I would happily do. Thank you so much. You've been so, so nice to me. Of course. I just want to make sure that you have what you need, especially as a visitor on this plane, and, well, now a permanent resident with us, right? Yeah. If I can avoid having to go back, I would like to. (laughs) Of course, of course. And I hope we get to find your friend quickly, and you get to find out that it was all just no big problem. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, sorry, I feel like you haven't had much stock in this conversation. There was just a lot happening, and I'm glad that I could be here to share it. Yeah. By the way, um, at one point, the bartender comes by and puts some plates of food in front of you, and it's uh, definitely some sort of, like dough that's been fried like a pancake or a waffle? I would like to pay if I can. She waves you away immediately. Are you sure? This is my place. I invited you. Thank you so much for the meal. I appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. So tell me a bit more about yourself. I saw you came with I believe that it looked like some family members? Yes, my mother and sister. They absolutely, they started, uh, my mother is, uh, started in the academy ahead of me, of course. I mean, they, she, she helped raise us to be wizards and trained us. My younger sister is still, you know, up and coming. She's still learning a lot, but I wound up surpassing my mother by actually becoming, and she's going to tell you how she uh, rose up in the ranks and became an abjuration master, and that uh, her mother never got to that position, and her sister is striving to be in a similar position. Okay. At the end, I'll obviously say thank you for all the information, because you said you might have some free time. I know my friend Balin here has a big ceremony this uh, this evening. I mean, I can see what I can do. What time is it at? Dusk. 
all right, I will see if I can be there and see if I can uh, see another ceremony of this nature. That would be fascinating. Yeah. Well, thank you. I should get back to it. Thank you for your time again. Of course, of course, Akiva. Anything you need, please let me know. Will do. Thank you. Then we will make our way to where we were going to meet with Orle and Scriv and Belinda. Yep. Are you all going to see Orle? Yeah. Okay. You make your way to the Low Hills District, the poorest district in all of Orenthal. Businesses and homes are kind of packed side by side with very little room between them as you make your way through. And considering the time of day, it's late morning by this point. The sun can kind of be seen overhead. But overall, you know that at certain times of day, even though it might be daylight out, the buildings would actually block a lot of the sunlight. You see a few few people that are roaming around the area, and most of them just have this kind of look of just suspicion and mistrust on them as they're walking by, occasionally looking you get at you guys and just sizing you up a little bit. You still see some people who seem to be just asking for coin on the street, by the way. I do not give them any coin. I remember not to give them any coin, sadly. I would like to ask Belinda if there's any general policies in terms of, I know, improving the area. Everyone seems to talk about Low Hills like it's just a problem and a blight, but these are citizens of Orenthal just the same. Yeah. I would say a lot of people here tend to be those who aren't paying their taxes, so I think there's some bias from up above there about investing in any infrastructure here. How many people here can afford to pay taxes? That's fair. I think it kind of becomes a a bit bit of a cycle. But, I mean, overall, there's still opportunities to make your way out with hard work, but it's not as easy for everyone. There's definitely a difference in privilege. I guess I just keep on thinking back to what you were telling me and Akiva before we came to town, where it's just one big game and stuff. At the highest levels of power, absolutely. But here, I imagine everyone's just kind of detached from that. Oh, they don't care about any of that, no. No, their problems here are boring and mundane and probably all-encompassing for some people. Like trying to find enough food and shelter and everything else? Boring things like that? For some, yeah. There's also some that this is, this is what where they want to be. You know, there's there's not always a, an urge to improve for everyone. It varies. It's case by case. But in general, it's just a bigger problem than any one person can tackle. Tony, I'm gonna switch to my psychic inquisition focus. That's the one that gives me advantage on insight checks. Okay. Do we know exactly where we're going? Scrive got an address. Yes. Oh, okay. It's a fairly plain-looking building, unmarked. It's two-story made of well-worn and like somewhat damaged brick several windows on it are actually boarded up and overall the place doesn't look very well maintained and that is the address you were given so i confirm yep this is the place that she said script so i guess you want to knock on that door i'll knock on the door door just swings open and you see several tables inside some people drinking wearing kind of well-worn clothes a single set of stairs can be seen towards the back of the room and that's beside a uh, long kind of bar with the door that's behind the bar that looks like it's about to fall off its hinges at any point. I assume there's staff behind the counter? No. No. You see a bunch of people just kind of drinking, and as you knocked on the door, the sound echoes a little bit on the interior for a moment, but people go quiet, and you see pop up from the back, standing on the seat, a halfling girl cropped, curled brown hair, gold eyes, and rough pale skin just yell out, Scriv! Orle! And leaps off the seat, and you see her bob and weave and dodge around the tables and the feet and all of that as she runs up and just arms around your waist. What are you talking about? I catch her and hug her and swing her around. So pick her up and a little swing right in the doorway of this building. How's it going? It's been so good. Oh my god. Okay, please, come on, come on, come on, come in, come in, come in. Get off the street. Come on. Okay. Follow along. She gets it. Walking in, you see some kind of abstract art on the walls of the interior of the building, just here and there. And pretty much as soon as Orlais run up to you, everyone else kind of like does little nods and goes back to their drink and talking. Is it Orlais' work on the wall? Yes. Nice. I guess she's been adding bits and pieces over time? Yeah, it definitely seems like things have been added slowly. And she runs up behind the, the bar. She gestures like, there, um, I've been sitting there. You guys, uh, all of you can sit. Uh, just grab some chairs from people who aren't sitting. I'll be right back. And she runs and you see her go behind the bar and like grab a couple of mugs and run back over. To, what? Drinking. Ale? 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 
ale. Nothing for me, thank you. All right, and she runs off and waits, like starts to pour in a, a big pitcher and comes running back. You see her kind of carrying this definitely, like lightly too heavy for her type of uh, pitcher. Plops it up on the table, spills a little bit as she does. Do we have any trouble getting chairs? No. You got a couple of looks as like people just kind of like sip and just wave the chair away. Like, go ahead. Just kind of sit down. So, what have you been up to? Oh my gosh, it's been so much. How long has it been, Scriv? Two, three years now? Your family says hi, by the way. Yes, I've been trying to send letters out to them. To be completely honest, I've told them I'm living in Enclave Heights. It's at least a little bit nicer place. And I was living in Enclave Heights for a while, but these... And she looks around and is like, this is definitely more my style. Yeah. Sorry, I, I know I... Hi, I'm Belinda. Oh, right. I didn't introduce you to my friends. This is Belinda, that's Akiva, and that's Valen. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Orle Silverbloom, a pleasure to meet all of you. How are you? How are you? How are you? Hi, you're tall. How are you? I think, sorry, what, what is this establishment, if I could ask? Oh, we live here. It was a bar, but it's um, we kind of just communally live here. A lot of it. Well, some people just, uh, they're, they're some friends. That's... Some cousins of, of... Who's we? What, what are we? Just those of us that can actually, like, spend some money and stay in this place. Oh, okay, this isn't some sort of organized group? No, 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 no. Wow, that was a lot of no's. Yeah. Well, that's just Orlay, or Orlay repeats, just for emphasis. I do, just to, I mean, I, I just... Oh, I'm sorry. It's been so long since I've seen Scriv, and I'm just so happy to see him, and, and just, oh, it's, ah. Uh, I give her side eye. So I guess the low hills just gives you more freedom to do your art? Well, I mean, for one thing, there's... Yes. There was a pause there. There was... Fewer guards. Oh. She's kind of looking at the rest of you like, I don't know you. No, Orle, they're friends of the family, if you catch my drift. Okay, so they're... Okay. Who designed your mask, by the way? She's staring at you, Akiva. It's a family heirloom. Oh, really? Where'd you get it from? That, oh my gosh, I would love to... Can I paint something on it? I would love to add some color to that. Is Please I, don't. I, <laughs> do you want to paint any mask? I have a mask. Is it similar to his? I like his design. His looks like really unique, and I would love to just accentuate some things. His is much finer crafted, but I do have one just so that when we could travel together, I could also wear a mask sometimes. You can paint it. Can I get this back to you later? Yeah, sure. Okay. I am going to just take a sip of the ale and enjoy being around Orle again. The ale is watered down. I'm going to assume, but let just not trust the Orle general. I want to look at the people around us and try to get an idea of what kind of people are these? What are we working with here? What are they like? <laughs> Go ahead and roll in your insight. 19. So looking around the room, they're not about to murder you. They're... Definitely eyeing you with a lot of suspicion and a bit of concern. So there is definite shadiness here. And there's a sense that, like, they're keeping an eye on you because they want to see, like, can you be trusted? I'm cool with their being shady. That's fine. I expected that. It's the low hills. If anyone looks at me too much, I will stare at them until they look away. Roll perception. 19. Looking around the room, um, on... One or two of the people, you notice on, like, the back of their wrist, a, what looks like a paw print. Tattooed. I say nothing. Yeah, so what's the day-to-day? -day? Just... Well, I spend some time here, and I try to find places that I can put up my art. So I know, like, eventually, I told my family I was just gonna, I was gonna go make it big in Orenthal, but I love painting on ruins. They just have such a great canvas. So I tried to find some other sites that I could go to and paint there before I actually got to Orenthal. Because, you know, there's, there's a few sites, uh along the eastern edge of the, the river. Wait, you didn't break into any dig sites again? No. Okay. You would never... Never! Never go to a non-Whitecliff managed dig site. You're absolutely right. I would never go to a non-Whitecliff managed dig site. Good, because that would be bad. <laughs> Is she lying? She's not lying about not going to a Whitecliff managed ruin. She is lying about breaking into places. She is getting into White Cliff ruins. Scriv is choosing to fail his inside check. Yes, Scriv has chosen to fail. So are you any closer to finding a patron? Maybe something that'll get... I found a few. 
some of them didn't really like my work. I've tried to find like in Orenthal, a few of them. I have one right now. It's this guy, Kindrell. Interesting guy. Talk to him every so often. Usually I talk through his friend, Demise. Sorry, Kindrell. Uh, what, what sort of position does he hold? Well, I don't know. I, I just wondered if he's your patron and he's funding you, what, what sort of line of work he's in. He just asked me for work. Oh, I, I just assumed you, you knew what his business might be. I don't try to press people too much. So I'm going to say to Valen and Akiva telepathically, we don't have to talk about it right now, but I just want you to be aware. Some of the people here work for the Thieves Guild called the Shadow Wolves. I mean, does that mean they're bad people? It means they're criminals. A lot of people get trapped in a cycle with the Shadow Wolves where they can't get out. I just want you to be aware of that. Gotcha. We'll just we'll just keep an eye out. So yeah, she's talking about all the like some of the, the work she's done and some of the paintings she's done for Kindrell. She's had other patrons before, but you know, Kindrell's the most recent one. Um, some of the other patrons dropped her because she might have gotten in trouble or almost in trouble. Almost in trouble once or twice because there were some guards where she didn't think there were guards and they don't like painting on the sides of buildings outside of the low hills. They don't really care about the low hills paintings. Right, that reminds me. Much crying little wolf. Henrietta shop? Or like, there have been a couple of people who've been scrawling just some nasty derogatory things going around. Do you know anything about that? No, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't do that. I mean, much crying little wool. That's, um... Oh! She kind of leads in. That's the Dragonborn lady, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. She seems nice. Why would someone draw, like, all this, like, mean stuff on her? Thanks. I don't get it. So you've heard about it? Well, I heard about her. I've been by there. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait. Why? Well, not there specific. I was walking through the Gold Petal Gardens and I saw that there was a, a dragonborn. And you don't see a lot of dragonborn, like, around the Vrimmer Empire a lot. That's true. What are your reads going for now, Orle? Kindral usually pays me about a uh, gold every two ten day for about four different artworks. Belinda, do you think that... Much crying little wool would have any difficulty with a newly painted, like, storefront. Because if there's a piece of art there, then that means that maybe there will be less of a chance of people painting over that. You're welcome to speak to Henrietta about it, but I think her goal has always been to avoid attention of any kind. But I, you're welcome to suggest it. I can paint something really nice if you want. I like her. She seems nice. I'd be happy to paint something. Also something, ooh, but mm, I guess, yeah, it'd be on the up and up then if it's okay with her. Yeah, no, I'll definitely talk to Henrietta and see if maybe I could arrange something. If only because, well, between you and me, that place could use some color. Not Henrietta's place I, over to Belinda. I mean, just like the entire neighborhood could use more art. Since when? Sorry, Scrib, I didn't realize you were such a patron of the arts. I must have overlooked that quality of your character i mean i'm a fan of art art is good yeah scrib always supported my art whenever we were in the tunnels and he would just like encourage me to keep trying different things and escort me in and it was great sorry scrib i didn't mean i I guess it just hasn't come up in our months of conversations wait you guys haven't talked about art in months oh scrib you must be so deprived i've just been really focusing on my work and there's been a lot going on and then we had to say we took part of the festival games and then the yeah yeah Oh, you took part in the games? Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. It was nothing crazy. I mean, you almost won the... <laughs> you, you <laughs> keep... <laughs> What'd you almost win? What'd you almost win? What'd you almost win? What'd you almost win? You became a semifinalist in the Cataclysm game. You were so good at Cataclysm. That's amazing. Okay, that's good. Good for you. And she does like a light punch on your arm. So, sorry, Orle, I guess you haven't been in touch with your family. Is it difficult to send letters out or... Well, I usually send letters through uh, some couriers. Kindrell gives me enough money that I can actually send some letters home. So that helps quite a bit. I'm sure they're happy to hear for you. I know letter writing is expensive. Or rather, mailing. It, it can be, yeah. It has a problem. But Kindrell helps me out. Actually, as we look over, are, can we assess the quality of her art? Like, I, I, none of us are artistic, but I assume we can make some sort of judgment. Are you trying to determine how much it would sell for? Or are you just trying to determine, is it good? I don't care about artistic quality. I just want to know if it's actually valuable. Make an in-check. I would like artistic merit. Okay, wisdom then. So for the artistic merit roll... 12. 24. To inspect the actual value of the work... 22. So based off the merit, uh, Akiva, she must be really talented. I mean, this looks pretty good. Some good brush strokes. It's pretty. It's nice. Valen, it's okay. It's pretty good. It's not amazing. 
but it's solid and you can see there's kind of a progression and you can tell which is the newer style she's been using. So it's on an upward trend. It's slow going. It's fine. I, I see that Akiva's approving. I see how excited Scriv is and I'm just going to... Oh, nice, nice, yeah. I'm just going to turn around to Belinda and I'm going to shake my head. Belinda, this whole room might be worth a gold. Oh, of all of her art together? <laughs> It's not a style that Orenthal, like, you've seen popular in Orenthal at all. It's not, like, in tune with the zeitgeist for current art. No. The latest ones she's done is part of the reason why it's about worth the gold more than any of the early ones. The early ones definitely have, like, no real value. So I'm just gonna look around and be like, well, it's great you have a patron who's supporting you. Yeah, and I mean, oh, I'm I'm always hoping for more, but right now, you know, a gold every every two ten days is good. Yeah, I really like some of these pieces. Let me know if you want anything special. I'll be happy to make it for you as a friend of Scriv. Okay. Thank you. You know, it's like most of the time she'll like turn and address you guys, but always turn back to Scriv. She kind of leans in really quick. like, um, Scriv, Scriv, do they know your real name? Are they that kind of close or are they just your Scriv? They met mom and dad. Okay. I think there's hope. He's doing good. I'll lean over. What's going on? What's going on, Akiva? Is that again, I think this is you. You're rubbing off on him. He's being real sociable here, and he's making moves. I'm not sure they're the right moves. No. Sometimes it's it's the effort, right? We are here to cheer him on silently by not judging. Yeah. I mean, she seems nice. By the way, she's just, like, talking back and forth, asking how, like, how, how have you been? Where have you been? What have you been up to? Yeah, and I am not withholding anything with regards to, like, hey, we got attacked by some undead and things are crazy. Does Scriv know where the line is of what to share, or is he just blowing past does it involve things that are not on this plane of existence? He does not mention that. I will be listening just in case things get out of hand, but otherwise I am not. Oh, I was going to say I'm speaking drink. I'm not drinking anything from here. And I will be listening to make sure that at some point he mentions my cooking. Now that Akiva understands what's going on, I'm going to listen for uh, any opportunity to wingman him. When we were in our 2v2 in the games, he did all the damage. I just soaked it up. 2v2? Oh, you were in a fight? Oh my God. Tell me all about it. It was rough, but Akiva is really deflecting. He did most of the fighting. I really only took most of the damage. You you shot them so many times. Come here for a second, buddy. What's up? Okay, we're going to change tack. Apparently, he wants to come off as sensitive. He's focusing on art, not on the uh, stabbing. Gotcha. Yeah, so she's going into how terrifying it must have been for the fight all those undead. It must have been really challenging in the fight. Yeah, while we were off fighting all these ghouls, Scriv, like the hero he is, went to make sure that all the priests and the church and all the ac acolytes, they were safe and he defended him against a horde of ghouls that were invading the church. I'm just going to look over at her and be like, so you and Scriv are childhood friends? Yeah, we've known each other for years and years and years. It's good to see a friendship that's lasted that long. I know. I've missed Scriv. I would like to incite her response about being your lifelong friend. Go for it. 23? Is she saying, yes, we are friends? She's saying, yeah, we're friends. Just friends. 100%. Cool. Blood is like, I know all that you do. I'm not worried anymore. That's lovely. Yeah, I've missed Scriv. And we need to hang out while you're, while you're in town. Like, oh my gosh. Maybe, and she looks around, maybe not here. But we need to definitely hang out. We've been stay actually, uh, telepathic communication. <laughs> do I give your forwarding address or? It's, it's fine. Yeah, that's cool. Wait, so where have you been living? Above the much crying little wool, Henrietta's shop. Okay. So I can always try and come see you there. Well, I don't know how long we'll be in town. Could I leave a message with this Henrietta? Yeah. Quick question. Uh, you mentioned your patron. Yes. Does he patronize some of the other fine folks here? I don't think so. How did he find you? I was doing some work and uh, he left me a note here and said he would like to meet because he saw some of my work and he loved it. He said it was fantastic and he was explaining, you know, wanted to pay me a gold for, you know, every two ten day that I give him four things. Then I went to meet him and seems like a nice guy and uh, I've been working for him since. Guy, okay, it's working out for you. Are, are you hoping to, to move to a more comfortable living situation? Kind of looks around. Probably at some point. Is she happy? She seems happy. Scriv might have a bit of a blind spot for this, but Belinda, she's not telling you everything. Scriv, do you want to invite her for tonight? For tonight? What's happening tonight? Valen is having a ceremony. We're trying to keep it a little personal, so... 
Oh, yeah, that's no problem, no problem. I can, I, yeah, okay, just me. Yeah, no problem. At the temple to Karis. The Rose and Gold. You know how to find it? Yep. Perfect, yeah, it's at dusk. If you just tell uh, whoever's out front that you're with Scriv Whitecliff, they'll let you in. Okay, yeah, okay, good. It'll be good to spend more time with you, Scriv. Cool, good. We have a couple of other things to do later today, but, I mean, we'll see you there. Let's spend some more time together. Okay. All right. Then I guess so. Uh, we will make our way back out of the low hills. Okay. And that is where we're going to leave this episode for today. Thank you all for listening. Please share this with your friends and follow us on Twitter at Rules As Written or check out our website, dndraw.com. And feel free to email any questions to the DM at dm at dndraw.com. Also, subscribe and leave us a review or comment anywhere podcasts are found. And please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash dndraw. And remember, Always make good decisions.